On the 5th of May 1959, two months after the first bodies were discovered, the four remaining bodies are found. They lie in a ravine just 75 yards from where the first students were located, but they're hidden by deep snow. Their discovery shocks the rescuers. They all had terrible injuries. The traumas were so massive that they were comparable to being run over by a car. There's a close-up of Luda's body lying on what looks like a rock with the next to a stream. She was missing her tongue and the cartilage of her nose had literally been flattened as if she'd been punched very hard in the face and her whole nose had shattered under the impact. Some of these injuries could have happened post-mortem in the two months since their deaths, perhaps as the result of animals scavenging. On closer inspection, more anomalies are revealed. Instead of her shoes, Luda's feet were wrapped with pieces of clothing apparently taken from those students who died first. Stranger still, her jumper is emitting radiation. The investigation was led by a criminal investigator named Lev Ivanov. And during the investigation, he decided to check the level of radiation. A Geiger counter is usually a military item, not a civilian one. But he'd obviously been instructed to check for radiation. But the hikers were civilian mountaineers. Why would there be any radiation involved? In the wilderness of Russia's Ural Mountains, nine climbers are found dead in mysterious circumstances. Their bodies are laid to rest back in their hometown of Sverdlovsk, now called Yekaterinburg, and a memorial erected in their memory. Not long after, the investigation is brought to a close. The investigator had to make a conclusion that would satisfy the administration, the leaders of the Communist Party. And he did it. He wrote, the students were faced with a power they could not overcome. Nine climbers found dead, half naked, disfigured and radioactive. I don't think they died where they were found. I think their bodies were moved. Demonic spirits from beyond the grave. If you do something wrong, the stick boy comes and takes your life. And gruesome experiments to resurrect the dead. All of a sudden his eyes flickered and it seemed to everyone in the room that he was coming back to life. These incredible stories come from all over the former Soviet Union, from times of fear and uncertainty. Where you have speculation without facts, you have mystification and myth. Concealed behind the Iron Curtain, these disturbing case files are now coming to light. With eyewitness testimony, declassified records and expert insight, we can now uncover the truth behind Soviet Russia's unexplained mysteries. This is the realm of the Russian wild man. Investigative journalist Nikolai Nepomnyashi used to work for Russia's famous Around the World magazine. He uncovered a story of a close encounter with a mysterious human-like creature. It happened in 1963 in one of the former Soviet republics. The incident occurs on the border between Moldova and Romania. The account tells of a young army lieutenant who'd been out fishing. Suddenly he hears a sound, like someone crying out in pain. 
He saw a very strange creature there. It was black and it was completely naked. It was covered by hair and some water plants. The young lieutenant had never seen such a creature in his life and he was not able to compare it to anything else. But he realized it had been wounded and needed help. The soldier cautiously approaches. He could see the creature was bleeding. He bandaged the creature's arm and the creature seemed to be grateful, but it did not say anything. Stepping back, the lieutenant continues to watch the strange figure. The creature stood up. It started walking towards the water and jumped heavily into the river. Then it disappeared. If this story is true, what had the soldier come across? Given the apparent placid nature of the encounter, it is unlikely to have been a bear. Another explanation would be a person with werewolf syndrome or hypertrichosis, which causes hair to grow all over the body. The encounter is impossible to verify or analyze, but Nikolai believes the soldier made contact with a Russian wild man. Tales of the mysterious Russian wild man, also known as the Almasty or Leshy, have been told for centuries. <laughs> 